so for those of you that do know me, hello, I am Katie Street. Uh, I am the founder of a new business uh, agency and consultancy called Street, actually aimed, named after myself. Not because I'm totally unimaginative. There is a little bit of science behind it. Uh, I call myself Street because people know me by my name. Uh, and I guess I had a little bit of fame behind me in the industry. So it made sense for me to stick with that. So essentially, uh, I'm not really here to talk about myself I'm here to talk about my opinions uh, and talk with our lovely panelists uh, but I am uh, here to help agencies I guess attract and win work with the brands that need them and of course you know now is a time that brands and agencies need help more than ever hence we are doing these sessions so these really aim to we're starting the monthly. These sessions aim to bring together the new business and marketing community across agencies of every discipline from, we've got agencies joining us today from PR agencies, we've got uh, digital agencies, ad agencies, marketing agencies, experiential agencies, and people that do all of those and more. So uh, we've got a really nice broad mix. And really to start to understand what's happening in the market, uh, what should agencies be doing to attract and win new business? Um, you know, I know it's not a time that we necessarily want to be opportunistic but we do need to you know, adjust to the new world that we're living in and start to think about possibilities because actually you know i think the new biz uh directors that i know and certainly myself you know, we are we are naturally opportunistic we are masters of change we evolve and adapt very quickly so yeah really to discuss what it is that we all need to do to you know to survive in this marketplace because it isn't going to be changing anytime soon. And uh, yeah, I guess what I want to cover off today, and I'm gonna look over to my screen because I've had lots of questions submitted just before, which I'm looking at in my email, so I have dual screen. Uh, so I will keep looking over here. Uh, but is one, you know, the, the model of activity that we're working through, um, you know, I, I really see this pandemic as there's kind of four stages. The first stage, which I hope we're nearing the end of now was shock. Um, so, you know, it was a real sudden change in the reality for businesses, whether you're an agency, whether you're a brand. And really most brands and, and agencies' goals were to reduce the potential damage and you know, the activities that they needed to introduce were quick response, change to people's new needs, get people set up working from home. You know, things went quiet for two or three weeks. So, uh, you know, we're now, what, seven, eight weeks in? Uh, I think we are probably still in what I call stage two, the adaption phase. Uh, so this is, you know, businesses are really starting now to think about what they need to change within their business to adapt to this new reality and actually you know, respond to their customers new needs uh, so you know in terms of the goal that was you know that's really around brands net brand agencies you know, agencies don't forget that you are brands as well but you know further building your brand image and really pushing yourself out to the market and you're know, adapting your business to the new reality i think some brands are a little bit ahead and some agencies are a little bit ahead because the third stage that I see is really this rebirth stage you know so how do you make up for losses how do you rebuild your business how do you you know optimize stay you know stay positive monetize what you can uh, and this is when you start to you know really relaunch your marketing again hopefully you know quite quickly because the quicker you can do that the quicker you're going to attract new business whether that is uh, brand or agency wise and then you know stage four when we're in this new world which we will be in at some point uh, is you know, is your offer still relevant do you need to change anything else and are you pushing out the right messages and the things you know I, I'm all about my, you know my our value proposition is you know enabling agencies to attract the clients that need them so understanding and responding to your customers needs so we're going to talk about a lot of things today. Uh, I have had some uh, lovely questions in. You will see we are missing one of our panellists. And this isn't a setup, I promise. Uh, we have uh, Jamie Willey, who's not quite joined us yet. But he's the new business 
director, also one of my clients at Travel Worldwide, and he is on the phone at the moment to a new business opportunity. So there we go. They are out there and he will be joining us and he, I'm sure he will tell us all about, that, about, about them when he does. But I am going to introduce the fabulous two speakers that I do have with me. Uh, first of all, uh, the wonderful Linda Davidson. So Linda, I one, I just have like a total crush on Linda. <laughs> <laughs> She's brilliant. Likewise. So, yeah. so she, uh, well, can I go right back, Linda? Linda, yeah, of course. Of you Gosh. may, may recognise Linda. Well, if you're yeah. ancient, you will. Well, well, I did, and I, I hope I'm not quite ancient. But <laughs> Linda was Mary the Punk on Senders. Um, and you have achieved so many transformations of her own in her life. Um, so not only starting her career in EastEnders, she then went off to launch, I think, BBC Tomorrow's World website, was it, Linda? And then yeah. has had an amazing career at the BBC, leading digital and tech way brainier than me. Um, <laughs> and then moving, most recently I met Linda when she was head of digital and tech, and also innovation, I think, at yeah. Amy Oliver. Mm -hmm. uh, she is currently in post uh, agency side uh, at Group M, uh, just moving over from Essence. Uh, and Linda isn't necessarily involved in new business, but she is involved in transforming the Group M business uh, to adapt to the new market, I guess, in, in a lot of ways. And also has a fantastic, um, you know, breadth of knowledge around you know how she would have, would have wanted to have been approached when she was brand side so yes please do submit any questions oh, I forgot my housekeeping uh, in the Q&A down the bottom uh, and or use the chat and say hi raise your hands if you want me to put you into the conversation at any point uh, I also have the fantastic Kenny Hislop so I love that I have a I have a nice connection to everyone who's joining us today so Kenny and I worked together we worked out 13 years ago was it Kenny? Yeah something like that. Yeah so Kenny uh, works for Pana Ricard uh, if you don't know Pana Ricard uh, and they, they don't just sell Pano and Ricard which lots of people do for some reason uh, they have some fantastic brands in their portfolio from Absolute, Havana Club, Campo Vieco, Perrier Jewett Champagne, I used to work on the, I know, I used to work on the prestige uh, brand portfolio when I was at Perno 13 years ago, when I was young and used to go to loads of parties and sports <laughs> events and things with, with Kenny, but Kenny leads uh, the experiential marketing uh, side of Perno, so very interested to hear what's going on for Kenny at the moment in, in the world of you know, I guess advertising and experiential for drinks brands, it's things have changed quite a bit. So before I keep talking anymore, and I do talk too much, I've just spent 10 minutes talking at you all. Uh, I just wondered whether, first of all, maybe Kenny, you, it would just be really good to understand the landscape of where Perno are as a business right now, uh, what's been happening and specifically what's been happening in experiential marketing. And then Linda will do exactly the same with you. Okay. Cool. So, hey everyone, nice to be here. Thanks Katie for having us. Um, so yeah, so I think um, to give you a bit of context is that our fiscal year runs end of June to the beginning of July. So we're, we're in Q4. And um, actually, we had a really strong uh, Q3, and we're gaining market share. Um, and then, obviously, from a um, we have so broadly two sides to our business. One is the on trade, which is the on premise, which is pubs, bars, clubs, and stuff. And then uh, the other side is what we call the off trade, uh, which is where you would take booze um, off the premise um, and. Um, sucker three quarters of our business is in the on, is in the off trade so so actually that and i think as we all know is that side of the business is, is sort of keeping up but broadly overnight 25 percent of our customers closed instantly so that that's that sort of left a big massive hole in our p l so there's sort of lots of stuff going on in the background to try and balance that and and, and do that so broadly um Business is good, you know. I think probably, you know, from a um, just quite a strange thing to say at the moment. Um, as we know, like everyone's driving to the supermarkets, and it looks like the the big retailers are stopping promotion. So we're going to keep a lot of um, of what we are selling. We're selling at full price, which is a, is a really good place to be. And, I think um, and it, from a lot of brands, is that they're not needing you. Know, they're not needing the promotions, certainly FMCG brands, they're just not needing to, you know, to do the promote, promotions of stock because they're selling just as much without having to, you know, to discount or, you know, 
put offers in place. And I think, you, you know, um, I see Ellie's here, so it'd be, I'm sure he'd be giggling at home. But, um, you know, we all we do promote drinking responsibly, but I think we can all see that consumption is, is certainly on the increase. Yes. Uh, you know, we're in one of those strange elastic uh, industries. And I actually, I have a it's a dual responsibility. So I work on a global gin business as well, mainly in the in the visitor centres, which again are closed. But I get a kind of global view of what's going on, and and that's quite interesting from all around the world how, how different markets are dealing with it. You know, if you look at somewhere like Spain, where you know 70, 80 percent of the spirits and wine beer business is in the on trade, that's been annihilated overnight. Yeah. You know, but then you go back to we're seeing Austria and Germany are reopening their bars this week. You know, South Korea are almost back to normal. I was saying yesterday, I saw some pictures from a prestige nightclub in China on Saturday night and people buying magnums of Belle Park. So yeah. I think there is there is some hope out there across the globe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so lots of lots of adjustments and like we'll, we'll dig into yeah. that a bit more deeply. Yeah. I'm going to very quickly skip past you uh, because I can see that you've <laughs> joined us. Uh, Jamie, I've already introduced you. Um, oh, gosh. Kind of. <laughs> uh, so Jamie's the new business director or business development director, I should say, at Tribal Worldwide. And also, I'm very lucky uh, to work with Jamie. Um, he's actually busier than ever right now and has just come live from a new business uh, chemistry meeting. Yeah. So, a thousand yeah. apologies for my tardiness, very sorry. No, uh, do you want to just give, what we're, what we're doing now, Jamie, is just kind of introducing uh, the current landscape. So mm. you, you know, what's, I guess, happened at Tribal over the, what I call this kind of, mm. uh, you know, the first two stages, like the panic mm. and the change has happened, but you know, what are you guys doing at the yeah. moment? to adjust to the new market and what's the landscape been like? Yeah, so so I suppose first of all, what what's what's the landscape like? So um, first of all, let me caveat with saying I just feel very lucky that that tri tribal is is a di is fundamentally a digital agency, um, specialising in sort of the more the more technical digital at, uh, end of the spectrum when it comes to marketing and. I feel, and having sort of spoken to a lot of my peers around the industry, the sentiment is is echoed that they're the sort of projects that brands are really picking up at the moment. Uh, they're the sorts of projects that they tend to procrastinate on because they they can be quite disruptive, um, quite time consuming, um, and so I've noticed a lot of brands waking back up, uh, including one of the world's largest uh, you know, automotive resellers. Uh, we've been trying to tell them for six, six, seven years that uh, they need e-commerce in their customer journey. And uh, we got an email through from the CMO a couple of weeks ago asking us if we could do that e-commerce thing that we've been talking to them about for six, seven years. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, there, there's, there's a great example of, 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 I guess, that sort of appetite that I'm seeing in the market. Um, what we've actually been doing um, tangibly, I suppose, from a new business perspective is, is uh, we've not been selling. I think that's 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 the probably the the, the the interesting thing is is we've been trying to help genuinely. Oh, we're not saying, which is a, a big you know it's something that I <coughs> which, you know, Jamie and I work very closely together. I run, uh, well, I help set Tribal's value proposition, and I now uh, and develop the marketing plan. And we've just been changing all of the marketing. Yeah, you know, basically we've had to adjust just like these brands are. We've had to adjust all of our mm. marketing plan to you know, speak to the audience in the way they now want to be spoken to. And in fact, initially we did try and stick with some of the uh, content that we were already planning to put out and to tweak it slightly. And to see the difference in engagement of that and the stuff that we designed specifically for the new environment, it, that it was, you know, the breadth apart in terms of you know, how well it did for us when we were looking to. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, absolutely. I think, I think solve not sell uh, is, is the approach we take anyway as consultative salespeople, but you know, never more so has it been more important. Um, so I think, yep, yeah, solve not sell and, and just being really tenacious in getting the brand out there and, and just letting people know that we're here um, is, is, is what we've been doing. Yeah, busy. You're keeping me busy. Mm. Just about my plan <laughs> to squeeze in my own webinar because I've been too busy. <laughs> tribal. Um, and Linda, uh, saving the best till last. Sorry, boys. Um, uh, tell us what's happening at uh, Group M and obviously what you're focused on right now. 
So I'm not focused on generating new business in any way, shape or form, really. But what I am focused on is operational transformation. It's an often used word. And in fact, we're trying to steer away from the word transformation and integration. Uh, so we're looking for another shun. So if you can think of one, that'd be marvellous to share it with me because I can't. So the programme of work I'm doing is bringing a body of, of separate companies, technology companies and data companies together to to solve some of the um, solutions that uh, Group M want to provide out to their clients. Brilliant. And, and I guess, like you say, they're having, you know, Group M are having to adjust and change and develop things you know, more quickly, just like brands are having to. So I think you know, we are all in this together. I think there's a huge amount of empathy out there. Something that I have picked up on, uh, and I was actually on the, uh, I was supposed to be flying out to New York at the end of this month to go to the big Mirren new business conference that they host out there. Uh, but I, instead of that, they've taken everything virtually like everyone else has. And uh, I managed to dial in to listen to some of their sessions. And there were some you know, really interesting things that are echoed in the UK market and, and probably across the world. But one of the things that I certainly have noticed is, you know, Clients' budgets, and Kenny will be able to back me up on this in a minute, they're not disappearing, but they are moving. So, you know, if whatever they were planning to do and whatever they were planning to, to spend money on, the likelihood is that that has evolved and changed now. And for some brands, that will mean that they are having to digitally transform their business. So the the uh, you know, the automotive brand that Jamie spoke about a minute ago, you know, that project has been being spoken about for ages. There'll be loads of other projects that have gone on hold, but that has turned around within about two weeks uh, and is now a you know is now a, a well whether you call it a new business or it's a win so the, you know the tactical changes that brands need to make they are pushing through a lot more quickly than you know than maybe projects were before so when clients tell you you know we don't have any budget they probably do they've moved it to things that are more important so you really need to think about how you can help and what brands need um, and just before I dig into some of the questions I think that probably leads me into Kenny you were talking about uh, we were speaking Kenny and I were chatting yesterday about any kind of really obscure approaches or crap approaches basically that he's had from agencies over the past few weeks uh, and what he wants to hear from from agencies uh, so I don't know if you want to give us the example Kenny that you had overnight uh, and then also maybe uh, yeah, a bit more context as to what you'd love to hear from agencies, but you all have to promise me that you're not going to spam Kenny with lots. Of <laughs> <laughs> I can't make any promises, <laughs> Katie. Yeah, sorry, Kenny. Oh, Kenny, you're on mute, by the way, darling. Uh, there we go. Hello. So yeah, so um, yeah, Katie asked me yesterday if, if I'd any kind of had any strange approaches from agencies, and um, I hadn't. But what, I had a couple of kind of random sponsorship requests, which you know. Um, we get, you know, kind of on a day-to-day -day basis, and what was quite interesting from them was we've had rights holders come to us uh, with virtual opportunities with insane requests, which has sort of made us giggle behind the scenes, that, and sort of really short timelines. So, um, and with that in mind, you know, I, we, um, Panorica have uh, made an investment uh, and bought a, a tiny Japanese gin brand called Kenobi. It's probably not known to many people, <clears throat> roughly... 60 to 70 quid a bottle, wow. really cool brand. Um, and it has, it has uh, in the UK, it has broadly half a dozen outlets that sell it. So Selfridges, oh, very specialist uh, uh, retailers. And retailers that are, that I'm probably uh, have very limited online presence. But I, we had an agency approach overnight to ask if, um, if we had any money to spend. Uh, and would we like to work with them and some crazy ideas? And it was just a, uh, what I think we, to Katie's point, is we're going to very have, very much have to shift where we spend our money. So in my area of experience, that's not going to happen uh, probably in Q1 or Q2. So we're going to move it into the off-trade and e-commerce. So people coming to us with solutions that on small brands that are are not going to be important to us is, it was feels quite silly or, or, or you know it sort of amused us a little bit. Where yeah. you know I think what we're looking for is partners and agencies to come to us with ideas that are relevant to our business now so yeah. you know we are going to go we're going to enter q1 in, in july with probably an off-trade and an e-commerce business i know some someone asked about e-commerce 
come back to that in a minute. But yeah, what we don't want is our agencies coming to with this is a great event idea or here's a live experience or actually here's how you, here's how we do some more brand in hand. In the on trade, what we want is uh, Jamie said it is is solutions that are relevant for us now. Yeah. Um, and just quickly pick up someone asked about e-commerce is is um, we are seeing a high, a kind of a triple digit growth in in e-commerce. Wow. And that's just my yeah. orders. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a slight aside quickly is um and again i told the guys this yesterday is we so the winery in the background is, is uh one of our spanish wineries uh in in rioca and currently at the moment none of us can get into the office to to buy a, a anything from our staff shop so when uh campo vieco our rioca brand is listed on amazon the amazon account manager is telling everyone in the business to go and buy it and it sells out within an hour wow is it, I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Just how things have Absolutely changed. Absolutely Yeah, how things have changed. And, and yeah. we, we have to be realistic that we don't know how long this is going to go mm. on for. You know, hopefully, we're going to get some form of announcement this week. But mm. even if they start to slowly lift things, you know, this is this, what we're living in now. There are going to be so many people at risk mm. that still need to stay at home. People are going to be nervous. You know, this, the need for e-commerce and people, you know, God, the amount of subscriptions I've signed up to, wine subscriptions, beauty subscriptions, fitness subscriptions, you know, Likewise. It, yeah, we're all, our whole world is now in our home. Mm. So, you know, we're, you know, people have, there's going to be some really interesting trends that come out of this. And I think that, you know, certainly Kenny, what I've started to notice is, you know, do, and we spoke about this a little bit yesterday as well. And, and then you can tell me your views on this when you were at Jamie Oliver and, and channel four, mm. but is, you know, I always think it's great clients that, that research and understand you know, insights and behavioral changes that are happening in the market. Brilliant. But what ends up happening, and I haven't been, brand, I used to work client side, uh, so hopefully I've got a good view on the world, but it's been quite a while since I've, I've been agency world for about 10 years now. So, but I always think, you know, send insights. Actually, what Kenny was saying yesterday is, insights are great, but we get inundated with them. We've got an insights team. What we want to know is insights plus What's the action that we need to take? What, uh, what's the solution that you can give us based on those insights? Don't just share another insights report that on behavioral change or what's happening in a se certain sector. It's really useful and it will help them, but you need to tell, to my mind, and tell, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, uh, is you actually need to say, you know, this is the insight, but here's an idea of what you could do to meet your customer yes, exactly. to, to break through. Mm. I think also sending insight cold without knowing the business and the intricacies of a brand, the, the insight can be totally miss the, the reality of that brand. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think it's, it, it, it needs to have a communication beforehand and an openness. And I think some of the, having worked both sides of the fence, I think some of the conversations that might be really useful because they turn into a selling opportunity for an agency be, are shut down without any kind of exploration. And that's certainly been my experience. And so, but then if you open up the conversation, there's an ambiguity about whether or not you're, you're interested at the end of the day in, to being sold to. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you know, I think, I think, it, it it needs to be. I like that solve not sell that that yes. we were talking about at the top of the webinar. But yes. I think that's it's that's definitely. I know that. I mean, I've had phone calls while while we've been in lockdown from uh, DevOps agencies and things, and it's they've been trying to sell to to me, yeah. and in a in a complete in a way that is a irrelevant to to my part of the business. But but be right, really selling to yeah. me, and yeah. which is not the way to do it. You know. No, if they'd opened up the conversation in a different way, then it it would have it would have been much more beneficial both to me and to them. I would have thought. Mm. Yeah. So I guess it's it's insight plus. But I I would say in short to have something before the insight that that so that you can deliver something that is really relevant yeah. to that to that part of the business mm. I, I also think as well that you know too many too many there, there is a sort of fine line really is is 
too, too many agencies trying to be too insightful. It's like at the end of the day, you know, no, no one has a crystal ball and anybody that's trying to convince clients that we know where consumer behavior is going and we know where your sector is going. They're just lying, yeah. you know, and, and I think, I think, um, you know, so I think, I think it's, I think it's just, you know, we're, we're starting to see some, some change, you know, some, some changes in consumer behavior right now. And, and we can always map that through to, to client conversations, but I think it's got to, to temper it down with some realism and, and Katie, I know in the sort of webinars that, that we've been running, we've always tried to strike that balance between lofty, strategic, impressive thinking and an actual on the ground tangible, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, you know, yeah, and, and Lily, I see, has just sort of commented in the chat here around understanding where clients are, yeah. you know, not not just pitching stuff, waiting for things to return, Absolutely. you know, and, and I think um, I think that's right. And, and she mentioned there about budget decisions to be strategic, and definitely the analysis at the moment is that strategy will be the number one. Um, the number one consideration factor for clients when considering sort of new agency partners. Um, what do you mean? Uh, and so, well, some of the some of the reports that are coming out from some of the intermediaries, such as the AAR, and that at the moment suggesting from the surveys they're running with with clients at the moment is that having that strategic piece of the puzzle in yeah. what you're talking to clients about. Um, and actually having that sort of more longer term view of where of where your market is going, where consumer behaviour is going, is going to be you know the top number one priority for clients. As as which I suppose when you put it in that way is almost sort of well yeah obviously yeah. But I, I think to, to Lily's point, if you're not pitching at that level, you're just not going to be resonating with yeah. clients. And also speed, you know, more than ever. I mean, look, we all know agencies have had to become a lot more agile so you know the, the big agencies so linda people you know, and jamie you know people that are part of networks like wpp and you know dbb it's you know, you need to compete with the smaller agencies that are able to adapt and change your clients need to adapt and change quick more quickly than ever so having a, an agile approach to your work and being able to implement things quickly again it's you know, right now when we're thinking about the the you know it needs to be strategic but it also needs to happen quickly so you know we know it's not hard to start to look at the market and understand what clients needs are and if you can adjust your offering and you know, I'm very much all about setting a really fantastic value proposition not just a proposition but what are your customers needs map back your the benefits of your agency to that and sell them and actually you know, you might need to chuck away your value proposition that you've already got at the moment because your customer needs are more than likely have all changed. So, yeah. you know, thinking about how you position yourself and, and the needs that you need to push, for, you know, push forward, you know, now's a great time to re revisit your, your value proposition and your messaging to make sure that you're going to get the cut through with brand. Mm -hmm. um, just yeah. a question to you guys. Um, and Jamie, it's probably for you, uh, first and foremost, and I will promise that I will be quiet and let you speak because you need <laughs> to hear your view, uh, not and without me talking. Uh, we've had a question from Joanna, who I think might have had to leave because she had an appointment at half 11, but she has asked, she'd like to know the panel's tried and tested methods uh, that have worked well over the past of a few weeks. You know, this is an unprecedented situation. So it would be great to hear examples from now rather than previous recessions. So it'd be really good to hear you know, what you guys are doing at Tribal, Jamie, because I know we've had, we have had an awful lot of incoming and you know, creative mm. open, open opportunities mm. over the past few weeks. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Casey. I think, um... Our method has been very much grounded in in making sure that we're we're identifying the difference between destroyed spend and delayed spend. And, and Kenny, I think mentioned in this, alluded to this uh, uh, yesterday in the context of consumer spend. But I think it's also true in in client spend. I think that um, you know doing the the research and running the analysis and having the, quite frankly the conversations with the clients to really understand the difference. Um, and, ha and helping to manage our pipeline accordingly um, to, to how and when we're talking to these clients is really critical to, to sustain success in, in driving new business. Um, so I think uh, yeah, we're I'm very fortunate to work for, for an agency where, quite frankly, we can afford to do that, where we can look at the longer term pipeline and go, right, you know, 
th this client is looking to do an, an e-commerce re redesign and build, right? Um, it's probably something maybe they're not going to be doing within the next 12 months. Okay, that's fine. What can we do between now and now and 12 months that, that's going to keep them engaged, keep them, keep tribal front of mind with them so that we're best placed to, uh, to help them when that comes about. And so my pipeline at the moment, I'm running to sort of six, 12 months out and having conversations now with clients that I know won't convert in year, but will be really critical um, because before we know it, it'll be January again and we'll be out of this and we'll be looking to, to 2021 mm -hmm. revenue. Um, so I'm, I'm, I guess another way of putting that is let's not just focus on the really short term wins. Let's focus on the really long term strategic relationships. Um, that's that's what we've been doing and that's a longer longer burn thing and it takes a lot of investment and time and patience but if you're managing your pipeline really well I think I think it should work so if you notice if you has, has your perception changed in what a valuable proposition looks like because one of the things that I've noticed from friends in the industry is that the 10 grand pieces of work they would never have even considered you know wouldn't have got out of bed for but but now they're thinking, well, actually, that's that's um, business development. You know, that that 10k, yes, it'll 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 keep the office rent for a bit. But also, we see it as business development now, rather than <clears throat> we're not going to get out of bed for a 10k piece of work. Is is your value? It, what you see as valuable changed? I, th I think I think there is a there is an element of yes, any wallet in a storm, as it were. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think nobody can be you know, affording to turn down business. Um, but all, obviously, and in any climate, um, ensuring that you're winning the right type of business is always important. Um, so I, I don't think how we are bid, no bidding on opportunities has changed. Yeah. But I, I, think, I think it's more that uh, the commercially, where the way we can work with clients has become more flexible. So, you know, I'm having a lot of clients say to me, we really want to work with you, but I just don't think we can afford you right now. You know, we're having, you know, obviously we are working with a national restaurant chain at the moment whose 48 restaurants are shut. They have zero revenue. Mm -hmm. They're not even doing deliveries. Um, you know, so, um, you know, we're saying, well, that's fine. Okay, let, let's look at payment terms. Let's look at different ways of working commercially. Let's look at success-based success-based pricing yeah. um you know which perhaps maybe wouldn't have been looked at before so yeah like you said a great example is like okay maybe we maybe as a loss lead as i would call it as a salesman let's do that 10k piece of work um and kick that back to biz dev afterwards to keep that relationship going so yeah, yeah. absolutely i think i think it's really important yeah that's really really good uh philosophy to have i think and the thing yeah. is that we follow you know, agency really, you know, we follow the same, you know, the things that we're recommending for brands and the companies that we're marketing to as agencies, we should, you know, we need to be, is it eating my own dog food? I always get saying, I probably said it wrong, but anyway. Yeah, saying, that you know, is the phrase. Eating my own dog food. Because, you know, the reason that Jamie and, and Tribal, I believe, are, you know, are seeing success is not just down to working with us, uh, but is because, we have been proactively prospecting you know, for the last year. So we have been building a pipeline. So therefore we do have you know, opportunities and pitches happening uh, at Tribal right now. And you know, it's the agencies that maybe haven't been proactively prospecting and haven't had a share of voice in the market. Uh, and I know it's, it's really, really hard to do. You know, I've been a new head of new business uh, at you know, small agencies, large agencies, there's always a struggle as soon as you, if you're a new business director, as soon as you've got those you know, RFPs or pitches to respond to, your proactive prospecting often goes out the window. But it is so important because if you don't have your own share of voice in the marketplace right now, that is going to affect your pipeline in six months time, nine months time, a year's time. We know the average agency you know, length time, you know, I've tracked this at lots of different agencies over here, but it can't, you know, of course there are those instant opportunities that people need right now. And that probably there are more than, of those than normal, I would say at the moment. Mm. However, majority is exactly as Jamie said, you know, it's six months, nine months, a year's time before those opportunities are gonna convert. So if you're not marketing your agency now, if you haven't got your value prop, sorted if you're not pushing messages out to the market then you're not gonna you're not gonna be front of mind when they're looking for an agent 
partner in in six to nine months time mm. um, Kenny what would you what do you want to see and hear from from brands in their approaches what would make what would make a, a, an agency stand out uh, to you right now I think I guess the understanding our challenges as a client and I guess that's probably true in any situation for an agency is that, that the they understand what you know what's going on in our world and I think um it sort of loops back to your previous point we were chatting about is 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 agility because you know I think we uh we chatted to some friends yesterday and you know I guess the analogy we were using is the genie has come out the bottle very quickly you know if, if you think you know within snap within probably 48 hours things are closed we're on lockdown and, yeah. and it's going to be a long slow difficult process to put the genie back in the bottle yeah. and there's going to be many journeys back you know you know along the way so you know, I guess that for us is, you know, the off trade and, and e-commerce is going to be really important. But then when the hospitality sector opens back up, does it open back up fully, slowly? You, you know, what point do you get? You know, then you then start to talk about the events industry and, you know, festivals and those, you know. So, and so I think when, you, when we're going to go and talk, to, you know, when we're looking for agencies and partners and people to work with, it's almost understand what our challenge is now you know in the next kind of three next quarter but then what 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 are we planning for in the quarter after because yeah. i think what we found has been quite unnerving from the client side is is there's no line in the sand so again it all happened really quickly and then it was like scramble where's the money what what you know you know you can imagine is what's committed what was po'd you, you, you know you know what can what can we not do what can we do you know what do we need to do you know you know and then and then it's only sort of literally maybe the last five ten what it is when it's actually like the dust is now settled what do we yeah. that's but that's jamie, exactly my experience as well yeah, yeah. and to um, jamie's point is no one's got a crystal ball no. you know no, no you know you know again from a booze point of, you know and lots of sectors you know shopping retail you know when are we going to open and what does that look like you know and yeah. what does it look like in july might not look like that in january you know etc so I, I think agility mm. uh, and, and speed of thought and if, if I may, there's, there's been a few questions directed yeah. at me <laughs> um, off the back of my last ramble, um, yeah. <laughs> I'd like, which I'd like to try and address if possible. And, and actually, there's a couple of others which I think roll up into it. Um, so, so one of the questions was around so what kinds of things we're doing to keep front of mind with brands and decision makers. Um, well, James, well, um, the, the obvious ones like, like this, we're, we're, we're running weekly webinars where we're getting an average of 60 to 70 uh, brands on them a week um we're now getting what, what i'm calling the regulars um on that that are attending every single one which is showing you know super engagement and, wow. and they're linking in with me i've never i don't think i've ever had a client link in with me before a salesman on linkedin yeah. um uh you know um and then but then i think um as 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 that and sort of keeping that dialogue going uh, uh, you know over email you know really one-on-one -on -one contact strategy from myself personally to to those clients um and then just getting sign off from my board to say look you know i'm speaking with the marketing director here he you know and, and a really great example is in working with a travel brand um they're they're a travel content website and um I've been talking to her about some really interesting data-led personalization, customer journey stuff. And she's like, yeah, I really want to do this, but just not going to be able to do it until people start booking holidays again. So just getting sign off from the business to say, look, I think if we invest a little bit of time and money and putting some strategic thinking behind this and start forming this with that client, um, we, we, you know, which will take, you know, a month or two to do, but it will put us in that, We've we've basically collaboratively created a brief and a solution for her yeah. in one, um, and uh, and and so really willing to do that upfront work um, to to do that, um, and also as well just kind of James making sure we're just getting um, getting the news out there about us, and and I'm having weekly <laughs> virtual Friday drinks with you know some clients, you know, and just sort of making it really personable and just really getting away from a bit of the business. Um, and I suppose the, the next question in that is, is you know, um, the big guys sort of taking those smaller projects that sort of Linda, um, you know, referenced there. Um, you know, again, you know, I don't get me wrong. I, we're not sort of, you know, we're definitely having a bid, no bid process. We can't, you know, afford to, to work, you know, for, for, for nothing all the time. Um, 
I, I don't think it will affect the ecosystem for smaller agencies, to be honest with you, because I think that, um, and a, a follow-up point to that is around sort of big agencies having the share of voice, but not necessarily the agility. And vice versa. I think clients know this, and I, yeah. I think, I think you know, that, that sort of preference towards big or small, um, I think, endures. Um, and, I, and I think... I think cl cl uh, clients see the, the value in, in both. But, but on the, then the final point, because it all does link for, um, you know, there is around, um, you know, uh, it is an opportunity from Jack, is it is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to, to partner with other agencies. I'm, so, um, you know, even though I Basically. might work for a really big lofty name of a, a big network agency, I'm, we're, I'm competitive. We, I, I'm, I'm basically competing against my other BDDs in across mm -hmm. the DDB group, and often we won't talk, we won't see each other, we won't yeah. collaborate. And together. actually, over the last three to four weeks, I'm now collaborating on opportunities with other agencies around my network. Who, by the way, some of them are classed as small to medium agencies, and um, we're now sharing pipelines. We're, we're, I've I've done collaborative pitches in Canada, South America, Europe, um, you know, over the last few weeks, and so. I think it's absolutely an opportunity to collaborate. And, and I, I've been trying to bang the drum for years now about, I, I, I hate the culture of closed book society across agencies. I think the only way we can all really grow is by collaborating. Um, you know, and, and um, before this, you know, I was an independent consultant similar to Katie working with really small micro agencies, small to medium and, and some large. And, and so one of the other questions was around if you don't have the luxury of kind of cash flow and, uh, you know, being able to kind of do that long pipe, you know, what, what would be, you know, what else can you do? Well, I, I just I think that partnership approach is, is a really interesting one, but it, it is a skill to make part, those partnerships work. Um, and you have to invest time in them as well. Mm, it does yeah. take a lot of time. Uh, yeah, they, you ha you, once you do it, you have to commit to it. And I like the same as Jamie, you know, we work with. I spent my career at you know really big network agencies and small and even medium large sized you know, independent agencies. And if you're going to you know, partnerships are hugely important, whether that be tech partnerships, other agency partnerships, mm. you have to invest the time. It is you know, and I've almost employed people to specifically do that job because it is a time investment. So I think pick the thing that you think you need the most and really focus some time in on doing that. And there are, you know, for smaller agencies, there's some fantastic platforms and things out there. So there's, you know, there's networks like Pimento, which is a, a network of, uh, you know, of small to medium and large sized agencies. There's probably quite a few Pimento agencies online here. Of course, happy to introduce you to Stephen, the founder of that, if anyone's interested in finding out more. There's networks like Beamer. There's, you know, obviously things like the drama and other things there's so many things you can get involved with not not all of them cost a lot of money and some of them are totally free so it's worth looking into those and in terms of building your pipeline i don't there are you know there's definitely a shorter span to market if you're looking at things like partnerships but you know there are also if you want you still need to do that longer burn stuff and there are some fantastic platforms like prospect.io um, that will give you data i think you can set you know, for quite a small amount of money you can you know send out um, you know prospecting emails uh, and start to build an engaged community but what i would say personally Jamie and I are different in this in this view sometimes but is i never ever send cold outreach sales emails and I never advise my clients to always have a tactic and something that is going to help them so whether that be a webinar a podcast or something else that we've just launched at tribal actually you know whether that be an insights piece or uh you know usually it might be an event or something that you're inviting them to give them something that's going to help help them or share something that seems relevant to their business never cold outreach with hey we're a great agency and we work with these clients and we would love to work with you that they get how i don't know how many i mean kenny you can tell me how many approaches do you get like that linda you'll be able to say oh, daily basis several on yeah. a daily basis yeah, ha half, a, half a dozen yeah. you know that i i just you know forgive me but i don't even read them you know literally they just kind of they get deleted because like it's not personal no you know no. it's not adding value to, to what, what we're trying to do 
No, exactly. The you word I, I like, sorry to interrupt you, I, I, the word I really liked there was partnership. And when I worked at broadcasters or, or um, consumer brands, they, the people, the agencies that came with an idea of how we might partner together, I, there was always a much more sympathetic view to um, listening and learning and, and trying to forge what that and think about what that partnership might look like. Where it, I, the other end of the spectrum is that cold email that you were just yeah. both talking about, which yeah. is just not the right way. Think, you know, there's a place for some kind of brand reach and, and keeping in touch. Uh, and you may occasionally get lucky with those kind of emails, but I just, I don't think they're helpful. Certainly in the current marketplace, I think they're even less helpful. Um, so, you know, think about your, your prospects needs and how you can help mm. them and reach out with a tactic or a thing that is relevant. That, that mm. certainly yeah. And, and on Linda's point, you know, and, and people loving that partnerships word, Linda, as well yeah. in the chat, you know, I think, I, you know, it is, as Kate said, it is a tough thing to do. It's, it's taken us a lot of time to even form partnerships within our own group, believe it or not. Um, and sort of I now sit on, sit on a board within our group that sort of focuses on cross-agency collaboration, um, which is difficult to do even within your own doors, um, let alone going out there to forge new ones. Um, I, might, I may regret saying this, but ge genuinely, if there are agencies on the call that you know, wanted to collaborate a partnership with, with me to, uh, you know, from a sales perspective, more than happy to, to hop on a call and uh, you know, have a chat. You know, I, think, I think the only way we are all going to get through this is together. And yes, a, the agency landscape will change. And unfortunately, some of us won't make it. But um, you know, I think those that, that collaborate, partnership, uh, and uh, you know, partner, sorry, uh, will be the ones that succeed. You know, from a, from a client point of view, um, we've certainly we're trying to have this part, like a partnership approach with our existing agency network, and you know, we've we've sort of reached out to certain people to see because we work with quite small agencies the way we set up and partners is, is that if you're in trouble or you need something, come and talk to us. You know, don't see us as the big evil, you know, client behind the door. You know, just we're here, we're here to help. Because, you know, again, I uh, chatting to some people in the industry yesterday. Clients need to remember is if we don't all work together and we don't all come at the back of this, then well, well the agency might not be there, and then the agency might not, the agency might be there, but the, but your account team that you loved aren't there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so we, we, you need to, you know, we all need to work together in, in this ecosystem that that. You know, we are hopefully we'll all survive. We'll all come out, and it'll be different. But if you, if you want those those partners and those great people to work on them, you could, we're going to have to work through it together. Mm. Mm. I love that. I think that's absolutely bang on. Definitely. And then, right, we've only got ten minutes left. This has flown past. There's so much more that I want to talk about. I just want to spend a couple of minutes, maybe five, before we. Uh, kind of wrap up and go through any last questions so please do there are a couple of open questions which I will ask um, one thing that obviously has changed massively is pitches are now all happening via zoom or webex or teams or some other virtual platform that so mm. it's a totally new world um, I was listening to a really fantastic uh, training kind of webinar session uh, and I just wanted to share something and I'd love for you all to share your experiences as well. Uh, is, and, and it's really obvious and there are some really obvious things that you can do, but one of the things that really rang with me was keep your pitches active. So when you are online, it's so easy. We're not in a room with you. It's, it's hard anyway when you're pitching, right? But when you're in a room, it's you, you can't, and some I have been in pictures where people do do this and look at your phone or whatever, but now people will be looking at their phone. They'll be looking at their other screen. They'll be reading their emails and it looks like they're still listening to you. So keep the pitch or the conversation or the chemistry meeting, whatever it might be, keep it active by frequently throughout your presentation, putting questions to your audience. So to whoever you're pitching to. So you know, after five minutes. So Linda, uh, I showed you this piece of research. What do you think the, the answer that most respondents said? So if she's not, she, she then knows that I'm going to be calling her out. She's much more likely to actually be you know, paying attention to what I'm saying. So there's loads of other tips and hints. I know Jamie's been doing a lot of pitches. Kenny, I know you've been pitching to your board. And Linda, I'm sure that you've also been involved with pitches, but I'd love to know any kind of top tips that you've got for people about 
you know, pitching uh, via Zoom or you know, via whatever WebEx type platform you're using. Who wants to go first? Jamie, well, you've just been oh. on, so you, you give us your tips. Yeah, fine, thank you. Yeah, so I, I, get, I won't ramble on too, too much. So, so um, the feedback from the clients so far is that they really prefer, actually, in a lot of ways, this platform pitching. It makes it much more intimate. It makes it more human because we're, you know, I have my empty decanters behind me. Kenny, I need them filling up, please. Um, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's much more intimate in a way that so you can set it so the person who's speaking is who you're seeing. So you're not distracted by 20 odd people in a room. Um, there's really nice personalization capabilities, especially in Zoom. So when we pitched a national restaurant chain, we each had a different background, one of their restaurant, into, uh, you know, the, it, it, um, one of their restaurant floors, um, you know, utilizing the technology to your advantage in making um, the content much more dynamic is, is something that, that, uh, that we've been working with. Um, and, and, and actually I think some, some, a couple of the clients have said they might actually carry on with this as a platform for pitching rather than bringing the mountain to Mohammed as it were and, and you know what, all trudging around London um, as teams getting to pitches um, yeah. so, so and, and actually one of the biggest things that it's made us do because it's a new platform is practice more um, for the pitch is actually yeah, yeah, it, because it's a new new platform, it's yeah. a new dynamic, it's made us practice it a lot more. And that's made for much slicker um, presentations, I feel. Amazing. Then, I would add to, to, to that is, is on practice is, is be prepared. Yes. Uh, and I, you know, I'm sure we've all had it, but, you know, you, you, you're on Zoom, there's a chat, then there's a WhatsApp group. And then people, so there's like loads of back channels that obviously if we were physically in the room, you know, the good old days of passing a scribbled note around, around, the, uh, around the boardroom is now a WhatsApp chat. So yeah, yeah be, I, I certainly be more prepared for, for these mm. types of meetings with senior stakeholders than I've ever been before. Mm. Uh, and then uh, yeah, be uh, multitask that you're on different platforms and, and make sure you reply to the right people. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I think I don't, the only thing I would add to that, apart from rehearse and, and be prepared, is that is be empathetic that to some people being on camera makes them very nervous. And, and so I think if you know that, that about somebody in your team, then make sure that you can pick the ball up if they drop it. Mm. Yeah. Lovely. And one of one of the really disconcerting experiences that I had, which again was a first for me, was when we were pitching a client and they chose not to have their cameras on whilst we were pitching. I think A for bandwidth, but B also they just wanted to focus on the presentation. And for, so for the first time ever as a new biz guy, I was unable to read the room for, from the client yeah. and, and had no sense of oh. how how it was going, you know. And and that that made me step my game up more again, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, so and, and you know, keep your slides light. I mean, what's something that I always say, regardless, is that this is this is the same in the in the real world as it is in the virtual. Don't write loads of content on your slides. They should be something that guides you through. The, the person that shouldn't be reading mm. the slides before you've said it because they will not be listening to you. So mm. make sure your slides are punchy and, and designed well. Guys, we've got loads more questions, but I'm, I'm actually going to, because I want to do something that I hope is going to be really helpful. And I promise these questions that are up, if we get time and people want to stick on, we will answer them. Mm. But whilst I still have everyone, or, or certainly the majority of people, um, I just want to launch a poll. And this is also for our panelists as well. Um, so we're doing these webinar sessions monthly now with the idea to obviously continue to bring the community together, but also to, to learn and assess what's happening. So at the end of each session, I am going to pull you all very quickly. It's literally going to take a couple of seconds, hopefully. Oh, fabulous. Um, just on what's happening you know, in the industry so that each month we can build on that data and we can start to see some trends. So it's really basic. It hopefully will start to provide us some, some insights. So I'm just going to launch this now uh, and I will take you through it. So the first one is how many new biz ops have you engaged with this month? Uh, it's a nice little multiple choice question, uh, but hopefully you only take one of them because I probably set it up wrong. Here you go. This is live. Me, me testing something new. Um, 
The second one, uh, what sales and marketing activity have you been focused on in the last month? You know, obviously, again, you know, do, do pick more than one if there is more than one, if that allows you to do so. Um, where are you seeing the most success? So same answers, but you know, which of your marketing activities are starting to produce the most leads? Uh, and if you don't already track this, then do start tracking it. It's very important to understand uh, what's going on. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, we, are, we were supposed to be launching our training program in September, but we're actually putting that forward now. Uh, and obviously the landscape has changed a bit. So I'm really interested to know what agencies are most interested in getting help and training with in the mm. current landscape. So is that prospecting? Is it pitching? Is it writing skills? How to write emails, compelling content, insights? Um, the psychology of sales, you know, how should we be talking to people in the new market? So I'll, I'll keep that running. Um, hopefully you're all voting away. I can see lots of answers coming in and we will <coughs> share this. Uh, we'll keep sharing it every month uh, so we can see what's going on. Um, so one question I have in here, uh, Dennis, I think, Dennis Caraman, uh, what's your advice for new business newbies who are new to the industry? They don't have experience of new biz in the old world and have joined at a time where everything's changing rapidly. Well, yes. And what's your advice for managers who've got young new starters on their team? How can they guide them through this? Well, I mean, I think it's probably a really exciting time to join the industry in a lot of I, I'd say they've got an, an advantage if they yeah. don't have the hang-ups of the old world, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, okay. Yeah, I think yeah. that's solid, James. Yeah. And, and what what would they what would you say they could do, Jamie? What would be your? I mean, my my personal ones are what you know, you need to react quickly, but you also need to understand. So do your research. You know, it's a great time to be researching needs. You're speaking to your customers. A great way to onboard someone new is to get them to you know interview your clients. Where are they? What? Why did they choose you in the first place? And what, you know, why do they need you and, and what do they need now? You know, get them on the phone to your existing clients, get them speaking to people, get them doing little polls like this. You know, it's, I think, you know, it's a time to very quickly research and then activate based on those mm. needs, basically. Any other tips from my, you guys? My advice as well, Katie, to turn into that, if, if they've got, if, if they've got managers, um, they've got managers um, uh, with young new starters, especially the keyword there is young new starters on their team yeah. to guide them through this. So look, sales is a really lonely job um, <laughs> in, good, in a good space, you know, let, let alone now that we're all working remotely. So I think making sure that you've got really regular touch points in with your, with your sales team, <clears throat> uh, not just for a business perspective, even if it's yeah. just for a cup of tea and a chat. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, um, be sociable, not just as a team, but with, with, with your client targets and, and the people you want to talk to. Um, and don't, again, just don't sell, just, just, just get out there to see ways that you can market yourselves. Do, yeah. you know, engage people like Katie. And if you can't afford them, there's loads of ways you can, you can market them yourself, get webinars on, get excuses. I always say, get, get any excuse to get in front of a client, yeah. you know, um, you know, and, and, and just find the, uh, find, I mean, there's, there's 70 odd people on this call. So you'll each have your own niche and own way of, of getting in front of those clients, but do it in a way that's sociable, do it in a way that's human and, and, and do it in a way that helps. Yeah. And um, we are at midday, so we'll start to ra wrap up, but my, last little comment uh would i would be you know in times of turmoil i think it's more um important than ever to notice the opportunities and the possibilities and if any group of people can do that it's uh, <laughs> it's us in the new biz and marketing world you know we are we're, we're naturally positive um and you know don't wait basically you know, start getting ready for a post pandemic world now do everything that you can to come out of this stronger um yeah and that's it really so oh, fabulous thank you thank you all for joining us thank i hope you. Great, session. great session katie um and please yeah, really great. share your thoughts any questions for the panel what you'd like to hear about next time uh anything that you brands that you'd like to hear from that you'd like us to invite on agencies you'd like to hear from um yeah and any other recommendations please send them you know plug them in and uh, we look forward to hearing from you all Thanks Thank you. Much. Take care, Take care. everyone. Nice to see everyone. Nice to be involved. Thank Bye. you. Thanks all.